it was a sensational murder trial that ended with a verdict few involved expected. It was a shock verdict. Kelly Lane was found guilty of murdering newborn daughter T. The 2010 murder conviction of Kelly Lane even shocked the judge himself. If I'd been the trier of fact, I might have had some doubt about that. In my mind, I've never been certain. Never been certain. To the outside world, growing up, Kelly Lane had it all. She was a talented athlete, a rising water polo star, popular, pretty, promising. But behind the golden girl image, Lane was deeply troubled. It all began when she was 17 years old, five pregnancies in seven years. She aborted the first two pregnancies. Then there were three live births, all concealed, all a secret. Her first and third child were adopted out, but her middle child, Tegan, vanished without a trace, the day Lane left hospital. Um, after a brief affair with uh, the father of the child, I gave birth. We made an arrangement that he would come and take custody of Tegan um, as I was unable to take care of her myself. To this day, Lane maintains she gave the baby to its natural father, a man named Andrew, who's never been found and never come forward. To make matters even more complex, even more unusual, Tegan's body has never been found. In the end, it was Lane's history of lying, of constantly changing her story about what happened to Tegan that would be her downfall. Lying does not make you a murderer. And the police investigation was incomplete by the time the trial began. This was a case that was being prepared on the run. There's no doubt about that. Former homicide detective Sharon Rhodes, who led the investigation into Lane, also broke her silence to Exposed. I was stunned. I honestly thought that she would be found not guilty because there had been so many problems. Now, in the wake of the series airing, two figures involved in the matter have come forward to raise their concerns. My name's Fiona Avery, and I was one of a small team who were working at Birth, Tests and Marriages. I've always wondered how much the jury got, um, because on what I'd seen, I thought that would, they would come down with a reasonable doubt. Um, but not guilty? Yeah, not guilty. Fiona Avery had been working as a police officer in Sydney's Northern Beaches before she joined New South Wales births, deaths and marriages, working on the first round of searches for Andrew and Tegan in 2005. It was a really difficult task, even with the computer system that we had at the time. Considering the, the lack of a sophisticated computerised system back then. How bulletproof really were the searches? Look, it certainly wasn't bulletproof. We did as good a job as we possibly could with the records um, that we had, but we didn't necessarily have all the records. Fiona Avery discovered that in New South Wales alone, around 8,000 births were going unregistered every year in the mid-1990s. Now, more than two decades later, she maintains it's impossible to rule out that Tegan, if alive, hadn't been taken out of New South Wales and given a new identity. And the searches should have been completed before Lane was charged. If you're going to present to court, you need to have a complete brief of evidence. It needs to be finished. Um, so the searches across Australia should have been completed. What if they weren't, if I told you they weren't? Reasonable doubt. The conversation will be recorded and may be monitored. Hi. Hello. Hi, Caro. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Hi. Last week, Kelly Lane rang the ABC after watching the series from jail. I was in shock, and, and things that I didn't even know about come to light. You know, I, I'm, I'm gone through all emotions now. Sad, angry, you know, frustrated. It's just, I feel like you guys have shown 
enough, surely, to show that the trial and, and the investigation was not complete, flawed. The prosecution was led by the then Senior Crown Prosecutor for the New South Wales DPP, Mark Tedeschi. Speaking to Exposed earlier this year, Mr Tedeschi defended his prosecution of Lane, telling us he had one priority. As a Crown Prosecutor, my role is to see that there's a fair trial according to law. And that implies a fair trial, not just to the accused, but to the community as well. The, the vast bulk of the evidence had been completed well prior to the trial. 99.9% .9 of it had been done prior to the trial. In your program, Mr Tedeschi sat there and said, we were 99% ready. And I nearly, I think I yelled at the television when I saw it. Hello, Sharon. Hello. It's great to meet you. You too. Thanks for making contact. Oh. A senior public servant with 25 years experience, Sharon Swinborn was the assistant registrar of New South Wales births, deaths and marriages, overseeing the massive searches requested by the police and the prosecution during the trial. Were those searches completed? by the time Kelly Lane was charged? No, because we were still doing searches through the trial. There were some completed. How unusual was that? Well, I've, I've never experienced it before. It was a bit odd. Was there ever a, a point in this long and complex trial where you thought, mm, the prosecution, we're not tracking well, or this, this may not go our way? My only concern was that the trial progress um, that nothing happened that could inadvertently abort the trial. I'm trying to sort of get behind it for, for the audience in that because it was so complex and so hard, if there, you know, was ever a moment where you were thinking we should abort the trial or I have concerns, anything like that? There, there, there was no time when I thought that the trial was going off the rails. But according to this document obtained by the ABC, Mr Tedeschi did have concerns. This is an investigation log of a phone conversation between Mark Tedeschi and then New South Wales Detective Chief Inspector Dennis Bray. Dated 12th of October 2010, four months into the trial. It reveals Mr Tedeschi told police that investigators weren't applying themselves and appeared to lack commitment, that there was a big gap in the information prepared by investigators, including school searches, and that about 100 children hadn't been accounted for. Finally, Tedeschi alleged that if the outstanding information wasn't made available by tomorrow, there was a real prospect the judge may abort the trial. What are you thinking now about the murder trial of Kelly Lane, when we have the prosecutor himself fearing that the trial will be aborted? There was a lack of fairness, a lack of due process, that not all the evidence that should have been checked had been checked. That makes me so angry. To me it says they should never ever have charged her in the first place. I can't understand that. When contacted, former Detective Chief Inspector Dennis Bray declined to comment. In a statement to the ABC, Mark Tedeschi said... At no time did I say to anyone that the trial was going off the rails. I was always of the view that the police investigations, including the searches for Tegan, had been exemplary. The Crown, from the beginning of the trial to the end, maintained that these searches on their own could not prove that Tegan was dead. It was led to show how the police had made a serious and detailed search for Tegan over many years and had followed up all reasonable leads, but that none of them had led to Tegan being found alive. The searches continued. We've obtained an email exchange between police and the New South Wales DPP, detailing 163 children were still unaccounted for in mid-October. That's huge. Absolutely huge. That's a huge number. That's not thorough or rigorous or complete. Mark Tedeschi provided this written response, telling the ABC... 
The school searches for Tegan were the last to be completed. They were just one category of numerous searches done by the police over the years to try to find Tegan, if she was in fact alive. Justice Wheely was putting enormous pressure on the Crown to complete all remaining searches by a particular date and had threatened to abort the trial if the searches were still continuing past that date. When the additional searches had been completed, the trial was adjourned by the judge for a week so that the defence would have proper opportunity to analyse the additional material that had been served. This was a farce. The trial was a farce. Um, and, and the fact that it reached completion um, is extraordinary. The revelations have now compelled the RMIT University's Innocence Initiative to act. I can only use the words miscarriage of justice. It, it's almost impossible to describe it in any other terms. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. The Innocence Initiative has now officially applied to the New South Wales Attorney General Mark Speakman for an urgent review of Lane's conviction. It is time for her prosecution and her conviction to be reviewed. It is over time. It's now up to the New South Wales Attorney General to decide whether he'll take action and review the process that led to Lane's conviction. Do you believe that there should be a review? Absolutely. Of course there should. <laughs>